In this video, we are going to solve Applied Electricity MESEM 2010, question 7. Now, using Norton's theorem, we are to find the current in the 4 ohm resistor of the circuit below. Now, in this circuit, we have two voltage sources. We have the 2 volt and the 6 volt. And then we also have three resistors, 1, 4, and 3 connected in the circuit and then we are supposed to use Norton's theorem to find the current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor. Now for those of us who are not able to clearly assign current in a circuit when you want to find the current flowing through a particular branch, whenever you have two sources then you can combine the Norton's theorem with the superposition theorem so that it will be very easy for you to find the current flowing through a particular branch. So we are going to use superposition theorem in addition to the Norton's theorem to find the current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor. Now the reason why you want to combine superposition theorem with the Norton's theorem is that superposition supports multiple sources. So because we have more than one source, then we can use the theorem. Or we can use that approach first of all let's make the two volts act alone so two volts is acting alone and then we want to find the current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor so we are going to do that for the two volts and then we do same for the six volts and then we can add the current so now because the two volts is acting alone then we are going to have the one ohm here if we want to redraw the circuit so we have the two volts and then because we want to use Norton's theorem then we are going to make this a short circuit so that is where we have the Norton's current and then we have the three ohms resistor and then because 2 volts is acting alone, then it means that this voltage source is going to be replaced with a short circuit. So this is it. So we shouldn't get confused. Because we are using Norton's theorem, we have to remove the resistor that we want to find the current through and replace it with a short circuit. So that that is going to be the Norton's current. And then because we are combining with superposition theorem, then we need to consider one of the sources at a time and then we deactivate the other source. So that's how come we have this particular circuit. Now, realize that this resistor has been short circuited because when you go through this loop, you can pass through only one resistor. So this resistor is short circuited. So now, what you are going to do is to find the current that is going to flow through this direction. Now, to do that, let's label this as IN prime. Okay. And then the current that is produced by the two volts is the same as the current that will flow through this direction because this has been short circuited. So we don't have this. We don't have this branch. So the circuit is only this, the one on the left or the the loop on the left so the current produced by the two volts is equal to i n prime which is equal to 2 divided by 1 so that is equal to 2 amperes so i n prime is 2 amperes now using the same approach we are going to make the 6 volts act alone and then we can find the current flowing in the same direction and then we can add the two current values so we are going to make the 6 volts act alone now if the 6 volts is acting alone let's redraw the circuit so we have the 1 ohm resistor the 2 volts will be replaced by a short circuit and then we have this time 
i n prime prime and then we also have the three ohms resistor and then the six volts here again we realize that the one ohm resistor has been short circuited so we are going to concentrate on this particular loop so like we did for i n prime the current i n prime prime is going to be 6 divided by 3 which is equal to 2 amperes so now to find the total Norton's current that's going to be i n prime plus i n prime prime so we have i n prime to be 2 and then i n prime prime also 2 so 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 so the Norton's current or the total Norton's current is equal to 4 amperes so now we need to find the Norton's resistance and then we can find the current flowing through or the actual current flowing through the 4 ohms resistor so to find the Norton's resistance we are going to focus on this circuit the original circuit we need to replace the voltage sources with a short circuit so we have one ohm and then the short circuit and then here we have rn that is the Norton's resistance and then we also have three ohms and then the short circuit so to find rn the two resistors are connected in parallel so rn is equal to one parallel three so one parallel three is one times three divided by 1 plus 3 now 1 times 3 is 3 and then 1 plus 3 is 4 so rn which is the Norton's resistance is equal to 0 0.75 ohms now the two resistors are connected in parallel because when you draw it like this then you realize that you can go through and this loop without passing through any other circuit elements except two resistors so they are connected in parallel now we are going to find the current that is flowing through the 4 ohm resistor that is the actual current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor so we found i n to be 4 amperes and then r n to be 0 0.75 ohms so what this means is that we have the Norton's current in parallel with the Norton's resistance that is 0 0.75 ohms and then we have it also in parallel with the load resistance that is the 4 ohms resistance so we are interested in finding the current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor now we can use current division rule to divide the current so the current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor is equal to the value of this resistance 0 0.75 divided by the sum of both resistors that is 0 0.75 plus 4 and then we multiply by the total or the Norton's current that is 4 amperes so 0 0.75 divided by 4.75 times 4 is equal to 0 0.632 amperes so this is the total current 
flowing through the four ohm resistor.